Hello Internet, hello world, hello students. Welcome to the first and hopefully many informative videos all designed to help increase your understanding, your knowledge and your appreciation of drama skills and drama techniques. Now I'm going to talk to you today very briefly because I'm going to hand over to my students very shortly to see um, what they've done with this information. I'm going to talk to you about Stanislavski. Now Stanislavski a very, very important practitioner to know for any potential drama students out there. Uh, Stanislavski was a real expert in putting together what he called like a realistic kind of performance. So when you're working in the genre of realism, when you're trying to really replicate kind of real emotions, uh, real life, real kind of characters that we, we feel a real kind of emotional attachment with, you want to be referring to Stanislavski as your main practitioner. Now there are a few, um, well quite a few actual techniques that I've been talking to my students about over the last uh, few weeks and they've kind of gone off and they've done loads of work using Stanislavski's techniques and they've come back and in today's video they're going to talk you through some of the things that they've been doing, some of the key terminology and most importantly I guess um, what they've got out of the process. So really uh, as much as I want this video to be just about me, it's not really. It's about students, it's about what they're learning, and it's about how they understand. So I hope you find this useful. Um, before we pass over, just want to talk to you about a couple of bits of key terminology. We'll be referring to these techniques throughout today's video. The first one is called the given circumstances. So the given circumstances of the character, very, very important. The next stage to this process is the magic if. So you've got to ask yourself this question, if I were in this character's shoes, how would I feel? What would I do? So if I were in these character's shoes, how would I feel? That's called the magic if. Hot seating, you should probably know what that is, so I'm not going to explain it. Emotion memory, a very important one, which we'll be covering in today's uh, session. Uh, this next one here, creative writing essentially. Uh, writing in role, uh, creating a piece of writing from the point of view of the character. And um, the kind of last couple here uh, are kind of sort of connected. Um, the inner and outer tempo rhythms of the character. So there's a specific term that we use called tempo rhythm and that is to do with obviously the rhythm of the character. Uh, I'm going to hand over now to my students and I'll do something at the end of this video to try and tie things up and, and conclude it. Hope you enjoy. We are here then talking about Stanislavski, aren't we? Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. So tell me a bit about character and then tell me a bit about like Stanislavski techniques that you've been using. Um, well, we're both, both playing the role of Leah and we found that she's one of the main female parts and she does many monologues, so we both do the monologues yeah. from her. Okay. Um, so talk to me then about the techniques. Um, well, there's the given circumstances, which is like the uh, main facts about the character. Um, like Leah, she's around our age, um, so she's like more... Yeah, you can relate to her more because she's our age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, people... Um, she seems to be in a relationship with Phil as well, which is another character in the play. Um, but it seems to be a bit one-sided as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. because she's quite desperate for his attention. Yeah. Right. So she talks a lot. Yeah, she's very self-conscious as well. Yeah. Mm, good. So the given circumstances are what then? What are the given circumstances? Um, they're the facts about the character. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah, good, good, good. There's like the magic if. So say if you'd put yourself into that character's role. So if he was Leah, you'd feel alone and lonely because Phil, who's your boyfriend, he would never talk to you, which would make you feel really unwanted because he never replies. And then, because of that, she'd be really confused because she's never replied to, so she wonders what she's ever done wrong. Mm. Um, she's obviously guilty about the death and DNA, which is the main plot of the story. But then she's angry because if he never replies to her, she's constantly repeating and talking to herself, so she's got nobody else to talk to. Yeah, yeah interesting. Okay, so what's the next stage in the Stanislavski process then? Um, there's the writing and roll, okay. which is where, again, you put um, yourself in your character's shoes um, to write a dear diary entry um, of like how they were feeling at this certain point in the play. Um, and I just wrote that she went when she was with Phil and how he was like getting on the nerves and how she was really like worrying about what he was thinking and um, yeah. Yeah that's good, really good. So you've done given circumstances, magic if, 
Writing in role, and then what is there another one? There's the emotion memory. Right. Um, and this is when I would use, why we would use, um, a memory from our own past that like creates similar feelings to how our character feels. Um, and I could kind of see that like I can relate to Leah because people say that she talks a lot. I kind of talk a lot as well. And then she feels as if she knows people, and I do as well. So I'm, I can kind of relate. I'm sure you don't, Jade. I'm sure you don't. Right. Hello, guys. Um, what are we talking about then? Do you want to tell me about what techniques you've been using? How have they been helpful? Yeah, um, we've been talking a lot about Stanislavski's technique of tempo rhythm. So, for example, my character is very nervous, very jittery. So, when I think about that, I think of like a fast tempo, and it makes me do like jittery movements, maybe talk a bit faster, and things like that. Yep, that's um, good. My character's much more laid back, so. Um, his tempo rhythm is quite slow most of the time and it really contrasts with um, Shannon's character. Um, yeah. yeah. Anything else? No, that's really good. Um, uh, yeah, do you want to add anything? Um, the tempo rhythm just kind of like helps you stay in character and helps keep the mood of the piece <coughs> correct and stuff so you don't go off topic. I think it really helps thing. reflect your eye wants as well so it reflects what you're saying and what you're actually meaning by it. Yeah, good. What is it called then where there's an underlying message that you don't know when you read it but then you see it in performance, do you know what I mean? Context. Nearly. Yeah. Subtext. <laughs> Let's try that again and I'll let it in. So by doing all this then, what kind of do you achieve by, by doing all these different stages? Like the inner truth of the person, so you get to find out their actual feelings and thoughts and maybe they'll say something out loud to try and convince other people but like Leah, for example, she comes across as bubbly and energetic, but the inner truth to her is that because she talks too much, is that it's really a call out, because, like because she's so ignored and people don't listen to her. So she talks too much because she wants to be noticed. And then her also her inner truth is that it makes her angry, and so she has inner conflict with herself and her emotions. That's deep. Yeah. That is really deep. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. So just either of you now, just talk to me then about what the whole process... I mean, obviously, we talked about inner truth and stuff, but just because there's people going to watch this who are doing drama, is Stanislavski a good way to approach a role? Why is it a good way to, you know, talk to me? Yeah. 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 Because, like, it makes you get a better understanding of your character, so you can therefore play them better and have a better understanding of them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Brilliant. Girls, loving your work. Thanks. So tell me then, um, like how tempo rhythm can help generally with other areas of performance and stuff. Um, it helps reflect uh, the subtext of the piece. So, for example, there's a part where I say, um, but I wasn't there. And I say that really fast. And when I'm saying that, what I'm really trying to get across is the message that I don't want to be blamed for it. And that's the underlying meaning of what I'm actually saying. Right. Excellent. Well, that's very intelligent. Thank you very much. You're, you're very welcome, sir. Anytime you want us to appear in front of the camera again, we'll be more than welcome. Get my good side. <laughs> so creepy. Um, I know. Creepy boy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so you've heard me babbling on about these different techniques. Um, you've listened to what students have to say about, uh, about the different techniques and what they've done, how they've applied them. Uh, one last thing that I would say just to kind of conclude is that we were always looking for a kind of inner truth of our character and if the students kind of follow these stages, if they go through them and they do some creative writing, they put themselves in the character's shoes, etc. What we should see at the end of that process is a, uh, a performance that has a real strong sense of what we call like inner truth. So you really, as, as the character, really kind of feel and you really believe in what you're saying as that character. But then what that kind of turns into what that kind of equates to from an audience perspective is that we as an audience member 
also feel really emotionally connected and really emotionally involved in the action that is happening on stage. So it's Stanislavski, it's not for everybody. Uh, I think it is really popular though and it's something that a lot of acting schools do sort of go into a lot more detail about. Uh, with regards to the way you want to be applying this, you really want to apply this for any kind of big performance, especially if it is naturalistic or realistic and especially if you're aiming for that inner truth. Goodbye world, goodbye internet, subscribe.